This is an interview with John Barton on Monday the 4th of August 2014. John, could you start by giving me your full name, place and date of birth? Uh, John Barton, I was born in Wigan, 7th of May 1957. Thank you. And do you know about anyone who served in your, in your family who served during the First World War? Yes, I do. Uh, my granddad Samuel Worley and his four brothers as well, who were older than him. Can you give me their full names as well? And if you know them, where they were born? And yes, where? they were all born in Wigan. So, if you're happy enough, me referring to paper. Yeah. Uh, Edward Worley was born in 1883. Uh, Andrew Worley was born in 1884. William Worley was born in 1889. Walter Worley was born in 1895. And Samuel Worley was born in 1899. And they were all born in Wigan. And do you know when they enlisted? Yes. Uh, Edward, uh, Edward, Andrew, William and Walter all enlisted uh, at the outbreak of war. Uh, one of the attestation records that I could find online uh, for uh, Walter w was dated November 1914. So I know that they all signed up uh, within the first few months of the war starting. Uh, Edward was in the 10th Battalion of the York and Lancaster Regiment. Andrew was in the Guards Division of the Royal Field Artillery. William was in, also in the Guards Division of the Royal Field Artillery, but did a different job so that they weren't together. Uh, Walter was in the Royal Horse Artillery. And Samuel, my granddad, uh, was the one who ran away to war uh, because he was too young. And he originally joined the uh, 17th Lancers but ended up in the Royal Fusiliers. And was there a family story about him enlisting? Uh, not particularly about Sam, but the, the family story uh, resulted in Sam running away to war because he wanted to join his brothers. Right, right. Uh, the, the family story was in the uh, Wigan Examiner in November 1915, when all four of the brothers uh, had already been serving for almost 12 months. Uh, and it was entitled A Fighting Poolstock Family, appeared in the Wigan Examiner in November 1915. And it showed uh, pictures of the four brothers uh, and a description of, of the families and where they lived uh, and the fact that they were serving somewhere in France. Right. And do you know where they did serve or any of their, anything about that? Uh, I know that Edward, uh, the eldest, uh, it says in the, in the description, uh, that he was wounded in the wrist and hip on September the 26th in France. September the 26th was the second day of the Battle of Luz uh, that the York and Lancaster Regiment uh, were fighting then. So I was able to pin that down as to, as to where he was injured. Uh, and at the time of the story, he was in a hospital in Scotland recovering from his wounds. Uh, the other three... Uh, because of press restrictions they were only allowed to say that they were fighting somewhere in France uh, and at that time I couldn't say exactly exactly which battles they were taking part in. Do you know anything else about their wartime experience? Uh, I, only Sam because being my granddad I, I, we found out a little bit more about his tales I, I did from my mum uh, and her sister. Uh, Sam uh, served with the, uh, uh, the 17th uh, Lancers, uh, which was a, a cavalry division. He was a stable boy with the cavalry division when he ran away, uh, looking after the horses. And then eventually, when he transferred to the uh, Royal Fusiliers, uh, he fought at the Battle of Somme in 1916 uh, and was gassed at the Third Ypres Battle, which became Passchendaele in 1917. And did he, did you know your granddad? I knew my granddad, yes, I did. Did he yeah. ever tell you anything about he didn't. Him? He didn't speak a great deal about the war, to be honest with you, no. He, he, he kept very quiet about it. Uh, it his, his, I only got his medals from his son uh, recently and then started to research a little bit more about his, about his past and, and just heard uh, the one or two stories about him, such as him running away to war. Uh, from my mum and uh, not from him himself he kept uh, he kept quiet about it as I think a lot of soldiers did yeah that's what we found when we've been interviewing people yes, that, that people yeah. were just quiet after yes the war, it was just family stories it. that were yeah. quietly passed down yeah. yes so did your mum ever say anything about the, the only story that my mum told me was the one about him running away
He'd seen this story that was in the Wigan Examiner about his four older brothers uh, fighting in the war. Although he was only just turned 16, he decided that he wanted to play his part. Uh, so he ran away to war. Probably went to Preston because a lot of the troop trains left from Preston uh, and caught the train there, uh, enlisted in Preston uh, and caught the troop train. And it came through Wigan and he leaned out of the window by all accounts uh, to some little boys who were at the side of the track uh, and shouted, it's Sam Worley from Milton Street. Tell me, Ma, I've gone to war. <laughs> what a fantastic story. <laughs> Um, and do you know anything about, well, you, you've said a bit about his experience, haven't you? Already? Yeah, subsequently he, he served as a stable lad with the 17th uh, Lancers uh, that, he, that he signed up for uh, and went across to France and looked after the horses as a stable lad rather than uh, serving on the front line uh, with the cavalry units. Uh, was eventually transferred to the Royal Fusiliers and fought at the Battle of the Somme and at uh, Ypres as well, where he was gassed. And what happened after when he was gassed? Was he invalided? He was he was invalided to a, a hospital uh, on uh, the coast of France, uh, and eventually came home uh, and had asthma for the rest of his life because of the uh, mustard gas that he'd suffered. And what about your your great uncles? What happened to them? To well, uh, all four of them came back from the war. Not one of them was killed. Uh, Edward, the eldest, had been evacuated because of his injuries at the Battle of Lewes in 1915. Uh, and I'm not aware that he went back uh, to the front. Uh, but the other three brothers uh, served their time at the front and, and came home safely uh, and all got married and all had families and all lived into the late 60s, 70s and early 80s, so every, every one of the five of them uh, had long, uh, long fulfilled lives after the First World War. That's amazing, isn't it, mm. when you think how many families didn't have... Oh yes, that none came, came back, away. yes, yeah. that all five of them came back, especially yeah. after the story telling that they were at the front, you know, and fighting, that, uh, that all four of them survived it in different regiments. And do you know what did the, what jobs they did come back to when they returned back to Wigan? Uh, it's there's probably more detail in the family tree. It does say in this in the story uh, what they what they were doing on the outbreak of war. Uh, if you wanted to know that, yeah. uh, Walter uh, was employed at the stores of the old Oldfield Brewery, uh, which was uh, close to Milton Street in Poolstock in Wigan. Uh, Andrew uh, it w became a shoeing smith, uh, was employed at uh, Garswood Hall Collieries. Uh, William uh, was employed by the Lancashire and Yorkshire Railway as a carter. And uh, Edward uh, would also been employed at Garswood Hall Collieries. Uh, whether they came back to those jobs or not, I'm not sure. And do you know if they did they were they awarded any medals for their war service? Uh, as, as far as I'm aware, they all had the uh, the standard two war medals. Uh, one of them, uh, because he served in a, a, a 1915 campaign, had the 1915 star, uh, and uh, I know that Sam as well. I've got both of his war medals. Uh, and his cap badge from the 17th Lancers, uh, which is the Death or Glory, the Skull and Crossbones, uh, and I have the brass spurs uh, that uh, that he must have used when he was riding the horses uh, to and from the front uh, for the uh, for the Lancers. Mm. That's quite a nice sort of memento. Oh yes, very much so. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Um, that's my my main kind of questions. I just wondered if you had if you knew anything about your um your grandmother's or even your great grandmother's experiences of um the first world war. And any any stories what it was like being in Wigan Borough. I don't I don't know any stories about them. Uh, yeah. uh, my my grandmother had died before I was born, unfortunately, uh, and I didn't really know the uh, the great uncles that well, so I didn't know their wives. Uh, and haven't really kept in touch with, with their family, to be honest with you. Okay. Um, is there anything else you want to tell us about your, your family's experiences or anything else that you've... 
that I haven't asked you about that you that you feel you want? Uh, I can't to think of anything else. All the information that I've got there is uh, it, is what I've told you. I can't think of anything else okay. about them and their experiences in the war, other than the uh, other than the information that I brought in today. Okay. Um, how do you feel looking back? about like, what happened to your family in the war? I, this story about the fighting pool stop family had had been passed down uh, from my mother uh, to me and my sister, uh, but we'd never been able to prove it and we wondered whether it was a, one of those like mm -hmm. stories that get told, a bit of an urban myth type of thing really, and it was only with uh, once the archives began to be digitised last year, uh, I got in touch with somebody from the archives that I know, uh, uh, because I'd seen four Wally names referenced on one particular page of the Wigan Examiner and asked for a copy of it. And that was when this story finally turned up. So I have managed to pass it on via ancestry uh, to other members of the family who, who researched their, uh, their fathers and grandfathers as well. So I was just really pleased that that story turned out to be true, you know, that it was, it was one of those... Uh, it was a nice story from the war rather than a rather than a sad story that five brothers could go away and five brothers could come home mm -hmm. and live long and happy lives afterwards. Yeah, that is a nice story, isn't it? Yes, so absolutely. Some of them weren't. No, yeah, not at all. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you very much. Um, that's it's the end of the interview. Okay, thank you. Thank you.